Hi, welcome back again guys. Uh, going to be going over CPU ID's HW monitor today. I've already gone over CPU Z uh, and now we're going to be going over their, some of their other software. So, yeah, again, if you want to download this, head to the CPU ID website. Um, if you want to know how to get there, watch the previous video, CPU Z. Uh, that will show you the URL and whatnot, or you can see at the top of the screen here. Uh, and we want to download the Red Lightning Strike HW monitor. Um, HW monitor Pro has some more, uh, obviously, professional options within it, such as remote monitoring and things like that. But for now, we're just going to be concentrating on the HW monitor. Both are free, but uh, HW monitor is the one we're going to be looking at today. So again, click on the big link and download it. 1.18 version setup. Download that. Install it onto the computer. Very simple. Very straightforward. Let's close this down. Okay, again, I've already got it on my computer because I use it all the time. So I'm not going to go through installing it. But once it's installed, open it up. And here we go. This is CPU ID HW monitor, which is hardware monitor, if you're wondering. So here we go. This is it. Again, nice small dialog box. And this is, let's just maximize this very quickly. This is what it looks like. So CPU Z uh, allowed us to have a look at the core components of the computer, so the CPU, the RAM, the memory card, uh, sorry, the video card, and the motherboard. Uh, what hardware monitor lets us do is monitor temperatures and voltages and RPMs of ancillary items. So again, we've got uh, motherboard, which is the ASRock P67 Extreme 4 Gen 3, and all our voltages. This is all live data, real time. So yep, here we've got the CPU V core, 1.32 volts. That's the maximum. Then we've got the minimum, and then the current value as well. And then we've got some other uh, voltage readings here as well off the motherboard. We've also got temperatures being recorded by the motherboard. So they've got uh, temperature sensors built in. So again, we can see here we've got maximum on the far right, minimum in the middle, and then the current value on the left. So after temperatures, we've got the fans. So currently we've got one, two, three, four, five fans plugged into the motherboard. Actually, one of these is uh, two fans in one header. So we've actually got six total. So you can see here the maximum RPM, the minimum RPM, and the current RPMs. And then that's so that's all the information that you could possibly want off of the motherboard. So if we just close the motherboard tab down, next we've got the Intel, uh, sorry, the CPU tab. So here we've got the temperatures of each core. Um, that again, maximum, minimum, and the current value. We've also got its current power draw. So here we can see in the wattage uh, what our maximum, minimum, and uh, current values are. So that's the CPU tab. This is handy for uh, overclocking, like we spoke about in the last video, um, because obviously you don't want your CPU running too hot because it will burn out and destroy itself if it gets to a certain temperature, as a so much silicon can 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 get to. Um, but the current temperatures we got here are fine, and I mean, unless if you're interested, you're talking sort of 80 degrees plus is where you should be concerned in your maximum values. But you can see here that we're we're well below that, even though these are uh, kind of inconsistent. They're not really they don't follow each other. Like each core should be within a few degrees of one another. And you so say you can see here at the moment that we've got some. Uh, some pretty big differences, so maybe some uh, a change of thermal compound is required, but we'll talk about that some other time. So we've got our CPU temperatures and uh, power draw. So if we just shut the CPU tab, then we've got our hard drive tab. So here you can see I've got a Seagate Barracuda uh, currently hooked up, and uh, you can see its temperature there and its airflow as well, which is this is the same. So 26 degrees Celsius, which is fine for the hard drive. So that's f for that. And then finally, we've got our NVIDIA GeForce GTX 560 Ti. Again, we can see its maximum, minimum, and current voltages. We can see the temperature it's currently running at, and which uh, the RPM and percentage uh, that the fans on board the graphics card are running at, because this is a dedicated graphics card. It needs its own cooling system. Uh, it's actually an MSI graphics card, the Twin Frozen 2. So it's got two fans built into that and a hefty big heat sink. So again, we can see its maximum has been 32 degrees Celsius, or 89 degrees Fahrenheit, and then the minimum and the average as well. Uh, sorry, the uh, current value. So what else can we do in hardware monitor? We can also click the file button, 
and we can save the monitoring data so if we want to uh, perhaps do a run so let's say we are measuring our GPU to maximum temperatures um, you could uh, record those temperatures for say five minutes and then save the data and then look back at it and um, I don't know maybe you wanted to get another fan for your case and see what kind of a difference it was making to the graphics cards core temperature we can use that feature to um, do that for us we've also got an option to save the um, SM bus data uh, so some interesting options there to save the data and look back at it uh, later on as well um, in the edit tab you've got cut copy and paste as usual I'm not quite sure how you would use that in this program I've not never needed to use those so far so we won't worry about those too much but they're there if you need them and then we've got the view so again we can have the status bar selected that's uh, I think that's when you minimize this i have also got an option to clear the minimum and maximum so say you've uh, you've been running for a while you just want to clear it you can just click that button and it will just jump back to its current so you can see here that the actual maximum and minimum are the same because that temperature hasn't changed and we've also got a, a help tab there so if we get stuck we can um, go into there and, and see what what's what so that's a pretty brief rundown of um, CPU ID's hardware monitor it's free again very useful for monitoring uh, temperatures and voltages especially more aimed at the advanced computer user I'd say uh, as as is CPU Z mainly because most people aren't going to be worried about this sort of stuff because it's going to be their CPU and their graphics cards are going to be running at stock clock speeds uh, heat isn't really going to be an issue but if you're just interested or you just want to have it uh, so you can um, tell all your friends how cold your CPU is running if you're uh, into that sort of thing as I know some people are <laughs> then uh, the option exists so this was a little overview and I suppose you could say a tutorial of how to use CPU HW monitor it's available for free at CPUID.com very handy very useful and a little bit geeky but all the same it, the option is there if you want it thanks for watching guys hope you learned something and I'll see you next time